I mentioned last time I talked about Murdoch Mysteries that representation-wise, they seem to want to have their cake and eat it too. Nowhere is this more glaringly obvious than with Detective Llewellyn Watts. So let's start from the beginning. We first meet Detective Watts in Season 10. Right off the bat, I read him as autistic, and in this way, at least, the show does do him justice. They don't shy away from this. It is very obvious, at least to me, that he is not neurotypical. In the way he moves, the way he reasons, relates to other people, talks, it all screams one of us to me. Now, this is all technically unconfirmed, since the show can't use terminology that wasn't in use in the late 19th, early 20th century, and I'm not faulting them for that by any means, but regardless, he does very much read as autistic, and things said and done in the show seem to support that. For example, in the episode My Brother's Keeper, the question of whether he's even capable of lying even to spare someone's feelings is brought up, which, as we all know, is a stereotype that exists about autistic people, that we can't lie or we don't lie or whatever, but it's not allowed to just sit there. It is challenged. Murdoch does say that anyone is capable of lying if the incentive is strong enough, and then also there is the fact that Watts was lying in this case, so that too. Mostly Watts' co-workers and friends just view him as slightly odd, which would indeed have been the case for someone like him living in that time. Where they falter in their representation in regards to him is... literally everywhere else. As it turns out, Llewellyn Watts is Jewish. We find out when he finds out. His parents died at some point before he was 12, and then he was later abandoned by his sister to be raised by his landlady's family. He didn't know until he recognized a song his mother used to sing to him that he even was Jewish. I believe my mother used to sing that song to me. Oh, yeah? I from Kripe Czech. That's an odd Yiddish lullaby, you know. What? Which, as a side note, makes his sister abandoning him even more heinous, since she left him to grow up completely divorced from his culture. I just... Yeah, I'm still pissed at her. My bitterness at his sister aside, in episode 15 of season 11, when he discovers he is Jewish, the show seems to be setting up an arc with him where he would learn about his culture, dive deeper into research of who he is and where his family came from, form relationships within this community he should have grown up in, learn the traditions, hear the stories, and then they just... don't. I know he's not part of the main cast, exactly, but come on. Not once since that episode has his Jewishness even been brought up. Not even in passing. It's like the show went, All right, we've established that we have a reoccurring Jewish character. That's enough, right? We don't actually have to do anything with this. Right? Watts has been questioning his whole identity and his past. He's very curious about who his parents were because he didn't really get to know them. So he has all these fragments of memories of, of growing up, but he hasn't put it all together. And I think he finds some comfort in knowing that there's a culture that he can identify with that he didn't know about. So all I can really say is I wish the showrunners would get off their asses and do something with it. They've made him Jewish. Now if they could kindly stop ignoring that. Because this isn't representation so much as it's a brief nod at a marginalized community with a seeming promise of more to come that was never followed through on. Which fucking sucks. Trust me, I know how that feels. I've been there, and it's really the fucking worst. There is another aspect to Detective Watts, though, in the form of his brothers, Hubert and Daniel Marks, the twin sons of the landlady who took him in after his sister abandoned him. And seriously, I need to pause here because, trigger warning, I am going to go into some detail about some truly horrendous ableism next. So, Hubert and Daniel had Down Syndrome. Had, 
I say because they're both actually dead before the episode they're introduced in even starts. Both murdered, quite violently, by their childhood bully turned killer. Both brutally tortured before they were killed. An example of the kind of heinous, violent ableism that still turns my stomach just thinking about it. The murderer in this case didn't just kill them, he delighted in causing them pain and then taking their lives. We never really even get to know them. Their roles in this episode amount to little more than props and more tragic backstory fodder for Watts. <sighs> We never even hear either of them speak. Not really. The only words we ever hear from Hubert are just Murdoch theorizing about what could have happened. They're not even his own words. In a sense, they get fridged, if you'll forgive the technically inaccurate use of the term. They both get killed so their killer's able-bodied father will finally see what a monster his son truly is and go confront him and to provide more backstory for Watts. Watts has had a really sad and tragic past, and this is just another sort of notch in that belt. Um, so many people have died in his life and have left him, and this is another horrible thing that has happened to him. That's their entire purpose. To be tragic figures continuously tormented throughout their lives and then brutally murdered. Murdoch Mysteries, in general, doesn't really have many disabled characters to speak of. In regards to recurring ones, there's really only one I can think of, and that's a DID system, and from what I can tell, not a very good representation of DID either. All I can really say about them is at least none of the alters involved are murderers. But only by a hair. One of them did actively consider killing, or at least assisting in the murder, of one of the main characters during her second appearance on the show. So yeah, not great. You can imagine my disappointment, then, when it was revealed that Detective Watts had not one, but two disabled brothers. But they're both dead. So any representation they could have brought to the show is similarly dead with them. All this time, we've known Detective Watts. One of the twins was still alive. All this time. And I get that if they'd introduced Hubert any earlier than they did, the issue of what happened to his twin might have come up, but also why make this their story at all? Why did they have to suffer like this? And why, especially if you're going to kill both of them anyway, make them some of the only disabled characters of major note in the entire series. Speaking of disabled characters, by the way, they, of course, pulled that threat of a character becoming disabled shit for added tension in the season 12 finale, and I'm just... I'm really so very tired. And the fact that they did this in the season 12 finale really just adds insult to injury because it is so closely preceded by the show's absolutely abysmal treatment of the Marx twins. Looking at everything about Llewellyn Watts, an autistic Jewish man who grew up arm in arm with Daniel and Hubert Marx, two men with Down syndrome, who he loved and respected, and, above all, treated like rational, capable adults with full lives, literally everything about him predisposes me to absolutely adoring him. I do absolutely adore him. I love him so fucking much, actually. I just don't think the series does him any justice. I hope they fix that in the future, but honestly, right now... I don't have much faith in them. The only thing I have to console myself with is that at least they can't kill him or ruin his career anymore unless they make that Frankie Drake crossover promotion they did non-canon. That's all for today. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you stick around. Bye.